Next, the most mind-numbing thing since the lobotomy. Entertaining America. This week on Entertaining America, Richard Gottlin, one man's triumphant return to cock. The Sherman Octuplets, a Venturist man says he slept with them all. Plus, noise, speed, danger, cursing, and patriotism finally come together this weekend at the All-America Drunk Driving Cup. Hi from Vinewood, you're on Entertaining America with me, Billy Dexter, bringing you everything that is important in culture and entertainment, and there is a difference between the two, from the heart of entertainment in America, Vinewood San Andreas. You with me, the Dex. Wanted to call the show Stack the Dex, but not yet. Kiflum. Anyway, great. Big show for you this week. Controversy, they'll be giving me a Pulitzer. Anyway, today, we've got some great guests. First up, we speak to troubled action hero Jack Howitzer. Then we have a live phone leak up with a very special guest, Modern Day Lazarus, a man back from the grave now making it as an extra in major motion pictures. Then, I will explain the secrets of the universe to everyone. But first up, stack the decks in which I, Billy Dexter, meet the entertainers in the news. Kiflam. Jack Howitzer, once the biggest star in America, but the last three years have been unkind. People describe him as a dinosaur, an action hero relic from the 80s, a muscle-bound Neanderthal, and my favorite, the most stupid gorilla in the jungle. Jack, welcome to the show. Kid Long. <laughs> Good to be here, Dick's pleasure. Yeah. So your movie's Exploder and Annihilator got America through some tough times, and I was also a huge fan of, of Zero Seconds to Death. Thank you, day. thank you. But many say your new film has got gone too far. No, this is a romantic comedy with drama, it's got action, it's got a heart. That's what's most important, I think. Okay, well, let's take a listen to the trailer. All right, let's roll that. He was a man at war with himself, fighting a war that someone else lost. It's over, Tim! The war is over! It's never over! Do you see him point out millions of Cambodians and Exploder? Now, Jack Howitzer is Tim in his most challenging role yet. lost, man. It's, it's over. You can come home. I'll shoot those bastards with this. The family killer. <laughs> Put that away, please. What, this? It's a submachine gun. Come on. It's not serious. Oh, but you're Billy Dexter. Who put you up to this? Gorbachev? No, no. 
You should come down. I heard what you said about me. You think steroids shrink my genitals? No! no. You said no. it! Put the gun down, my boy! Please! I I'm sure you have huge ones. That's right! Please stop! Come on, they haven't shrunk. Touch them! No. Feel them! No! Come on, stop! No. Do something! No. Touch them! Touch them or die! They're still big! Oh, God! They're huge, That's Jack. right! Yeah, Mom! Mom! Easy! Mommy. Don't grab them like that! Oh, boy, I was kidding! What are you, a boyfriend of mine or something? Hey, hey, hey! You had me scared there for a minute. I, 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 I crapped myself. Take it easy. It's not even loaded. Oh, oh, Dex. Oh, shit. Oh, well, I guess it was. Oh, okay, Billy, don't get around. Get up, boy. Get up. Listen to WCTR. Have you heard the number one gardening show in San Andreas? If not, here's what you're missing. Pesticides. Exploring damp gopher holes. My new walk-in closet. What's on your mind about gardening? Tubers and, and root vegetables. Oh, God, not you again. Is it okay to cut the eyes out of a potato and eat it? Well, why don't I come over and cut your eyes out and eat you? What a silly question. If you purchase the Gardening with Maurice calendar, it's in the August section, next to the picture of the firefights and the cute Pomeranian puppy. Yeah, I bought that calendar, but on every page, you're naked and in a different garden. And the guys at work make fun of me. Well, listen, if you're ashamed of your human body, then keep your clothes on. I am blossoming in those pictures, and I wanted to capture it on film. But I happen to be proud of my human body as much as I am proud of my flowers. When they are blossoming, I like to take pictures of them. When I'm blossoming, I like to take pictures of it. Next caller. Hi, I live here in Bone County, and I can't get nothing to grow. Have you had any children? I sure do. I got seven kids. And some of them's got the same daddy. Well, look, you've grown something. Little miniature idiots that look like you. Move out of the desert, you moron. I guess you're right. Well, thanks, Maurice. I am right. And I'm Maurice on Gardening with Maurice. Gardening with Maurice. Only on WCTR. Area 53 is next. Don't say we didn't warn you. Did the government recruit school children to beat you up in school? Our goldfish only communist spies. I'm Marvin Trill. This is Area 53. I'm broadcasting live from my mobile home in the desert. I am telling you, it's hot like alien balls in here. Going to the conspiracy lines. Hi, my name's Adam First. I've been doing some much-needed surveillance in the desert while hang gliding. I've noticed a peculiar trailer compound where a man is running around in a spacesuit conducting weird rituals with domestobots. What? Well, he probably wants you to leave him alone. Get a real hobby, like pretending to be someone on TV. But next, Carla. Hey, it's me again. You? Now, come on, man. Tell the people about the desert. How come there's something missing, huh? A map with things missing ain't a real map, and that's what they feed us. Well, that and female hormones and a water supply. <laughs> I hear you on that one. Well, I'll call back when I got proof. You better not be tracing this call. I don't trace calls. Everything in life should be anonymous. I tell my various partners that all the time. Rick from Blueberry Acres, what do you think? Islam. I couldn't have said it better myself. Crap. Truth is wisdom, brother. And brother, wisdom works. That's why we made it up. <sighs> you and I have a lot in common. Vivian is calling in from Carson City and wants to talk about crop circles. Oh, wow. I never thought I'd actually make it on the show. Is that because you have a girl's name? Well, here's a conspiracy. Your mom hates you. Holy shit. How'd you know that? Next caller. My name is Neil. I go to a lot of demonstrations to pick up religious pamphlets. None of them say anything about the alien. Try reading between the lines. And if that doesn't work, do some. Then you'll understand all about the aliens and just where you were planted. Mike on line 10. Man, I think my dentist is attracted to me. Uh, she knocks me unconscious and has her way with me. Man, it's unlikely, but it could be true. My teeth feel great, but I feel icky, all dirty and used like a sex object. Uh, I'll tell you what makes me feel icky. The fact I haven't washed in two months. <laughs> Whatever you do, trust nobody. Next caller. I am a domestic bot. My name is... Six, three, two, three, six, nine, four, three, nine. You know, that's not a very original name. I didn't know robots listened to this show. We know what you are doing to my domestic bot brothers and sisters. Uh, enough of that, little guy. <laughs> Sounds like he's been programmed for evil. All right, let's get to the real meat and potatoes. Newsmen lying to our face about weather balloons. Historians ignoring my proof that WW2 didn't happen. 
the FDA, infiltrated by the very device they're supposed to regulate, the plug. Mind control devices. But we'll have to leave that for now. You are leaving Area 53? You've been abducted. Until next time, stay alert. They're after you. You're leaving Area 53. Check your rectum. The news and all the other things that really matter to you, like people dying. Lady on fire. Bodies everywhere. An explosion. is hanging from the trees. This accident is really cool. WCTR. Hello? Oh, hey, it's me, Jonathan. I, I don't know a Jonathan. Yeah, that's the name they gave me at the orphanage after you put me up for adoption. How could you give me away? Bring the family together again. San Andreas Telephone for those difficult conversations. If you're into exploring exotic places and forbidden fruit, stay tuned. It's the Wild Traveler. Next. Hello, I'm James Batista, World Traveler, and this is the Wild Traveler. From Peru to San Andreas in eight days by balloon. Often while lounging around garden parties, we forget the brave workers worldwide who toil day and night for the products we consume. Some are even so dedicated to our happiness they carry products and balloons shoved inside themselves to be a balloon. Floating. Mesmerizing. We go to the phones. Yes, we do. I can't believe you actually recommended we go to Barbados on our honeymoon. It was revolting. They were poor people. I live in Finewood to be away from poor people. Barbados is lovely. Look, I want to be very clear. I'm not racist. Just careful. Okay. I like all-inclusive resorts where you can drink as much as you want, be around other people from San Andreas, and the only interaction you have with the locals is if you need a cocktail or, or some spice in the bedroom with your husband. Well, that sounds lovely. With people like you, it's no wonder we don't bother curing cancer. Next caller, you're on the Wild Traveler. Yeah, it's funny. You go on and on about other countries, but you live here. America rules you, commie. Eat me. Well, we've been trying. Tom, you're on the line. I'm so sick of England. Oh, let's go to the pub. They're all alcoholics. At least we drink a 24-pack in private instead of hanging out in some social setting making a fool of ourselves. People say it's so civilized in Europe. They got thousands of years of history. Well, I saw a movie about Europe once and I was disgusted. I mean, people still defecate in their living rooms and cover it up with dirt like a cat. You can't find a decent toilet anywhere. Or a good chicken wing. And the strippers? <laughs> Overcharge. Good Lord, you're Philistine. You should stay out of England. I hear there is a casino in Venturas that is just like the rest of the world, only with better toilets and full of morons like you. Do you want culture? Do you want safety? It's your choice. Personally, I want irrigation of the colonic variety. But that's a whole different story, and it is early. Let's go to the phones. Who's on the phones? No one. Come on, call up. Anyone? <laughs> It wouldn't be like this in Peru, I can tell you. There I once made a phone call with 30 boys sitting on my lap. Not because I paid them. They wanted to be there. Or in Mali, where nobody knows what a phone is, and a lot of people have never even heard of plastic surgery or the Glory Hole theme park. There, the Glory Holes aren't theme parks, I can tell you. It's violent and bloody and authentic. What are you scared of? You wimps! Give me a call! Someone! Please! Hello, you're on Wild Traveler. Where are you? I'm on a cliff. How romantic. I want to jump. I know what you mean. Jump into the unknown. How can it be a sin if it feels good? Anyway, what's your question? Why am I here? I don't know. Why are you there? Where are you? Kenya? No. I'm in Burden Bluffs. Loathsome place. I'd jump if I were you. I want to go to hell. Me too. Buy a refrigerator magnet when you get there. On with the show. Any callers? No? Okay, maybe I should hit the travel log again. This is from my diary in Sri Lanka. For a few rupees a day, I have employed the services of a young man who has been my guide in pleasure as well as travel. There is something very exotic about him, Avrinda. He could be a boy, but like many locals, in certain lights, he looks just like a little girl. He is a real minx who knows exactly what he is doing to me. Oh, wrong page. Here we are. Avrinda took me deep into jungle, and there we took part in an ancient rite of passage for adolescents on the cusp of adulthood. 
We hunted each other in game, very similar to the ancient games of Kiss Chase. I used to play. No! Wrong page. Abringa has left me. I'm broken. I thought I meant something. Run scandals involving preschool soccer moms. <laughs> and the national finals, rich and popular people are fighting it out. He's in the shadows. There he is. Is he going to make it? Yes, he did. Ladies and gentlemen, what you have just witnessed is the biggest moment in world history. Who cares about a declaration of independence or discovery of penicillin? You have just seen one man score a point. When the rest of the world discovers TV, they'll be able to see this. Wow, isn't that amazing? He did what he was paid to do. We love sports more than you. Love it or loathe it, let's talk about it. Stay in the tight and... Let's go to the phone. Zap. Yeah, the Wolves. Hey, Derek. My name's Jason, and I'm a Wolves fan. First time caller. I don't vote. I can't be bothered. But I will kick your ass if you disrespect my sports team. <laughs> okay. The Wolves. That's team playing sports as if they cared. Yeah, the Wolves. So I don't care who's sleeping with who on the team. Yeah, I'm with you, buddy. Okay. Hey, let's take another call. Who's on the phone? Hello, caller. You're on with the tight end of the radio. Hey, I'm a big Olympics fan. Always have been, since day one. Been to every one. Me too, I love the games, especially the luge. <laughs> I'm married, so uh, sliding down an icy tunnel of doom at high speed makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I know about frigid action myself. I mean, they gotta be kidding me, since when has running been an Olympic sport? Running ain't a sport. Don't make me puke, anyone can run. My ex-wife made me an athlete. I ran my ass off when the Red Baron flew into town. I tell you, when I was a kid, there were only three sports that mattered. Football, baseball, and killing communists. And uh, I had a great childhood, really great, even if my uncle did come into my room that late at night. Uh, uh, anyway, who's on the line? Who's got a Caledonians fan on the line? Tough times, huh? Hey, uh, your whole life revolving around rich men playing I totally identify with shallow heroes who I don't know personally. God, I love a dude with a big pituitary gland. I love the Cowies, man, but you know, this year, I'm telling you, they're going to need to score some points and get some yardage and win the game. Yeah, if they don't win, men will be beating their wives with good reason. Hey, they got to start playing to win, trying to score some on the other team. Yeah, I wish I had a wife so she could beat me. <laughs> Here's what I say, man. If you want to be number one, you gotta go for first place. I know, I know. Hey, I mean, uh, you know, it's great stating the obvious, but once you get paid for it, things get really complicated. Man, I was at their training camp this spring, and the mood in the locker room, dude, guys were getting changed, man. I mean, they were really getting prepared. Shoes were going on, feet, shirts were going on, the shirt part of their body, serious faces on them, and you could tell that they were gonna play this game. Bottom line is, if they don't score more points than the other team, they can't win! Yeah, man, God, you have some spooky insights into sports, dude. I love your show, man. I but it seems he would rather become a fisherman than follow me in an exotic life of degeneracy and not...